so you're a very talented person though i mean you got so you have a video game coming out which is i guess it's also a comic book i assume right yes we have so i have some of the comic books here with me we have eight books to date that we have published under the world of aluna which is the aluna her origins and where she comes from and her whole story and how she embarks on this new adventure when she discovers that she has these like superpowers yeah uh, but we've been We've been doing pretty well, I, I mean, thank God. And then I, I lent the character to an existing online video game uh, that was called um, Heroes of New Earth. It was kind of like the competitor to League of Legends. And from there, I started to really get the bug about her having her own video game. But uh -huh. it's been a long time coming. I mean, we've been producing a Luna comic book and stuff for more than 10 years. Oh, that's amazing. Oh, can you tell us about the story hey. because she's a Latina superhero now she's coming to video game. Tell us about the backstory of her and her world. So uh, she, the world is set in the 1500s in the discovery of South America. Mm -hmm. And Aluna is half goddess Pachamama, which is a goddess that a lot of the ancient civilizations of South America, Central America, and the Caribbean believe in. And she's half conquistador, half Spaniard conquistador. Okay. So she's a half breed and she has always this inner struggle because of that. And um, her story starts basically, so she's this daughter that this conquistador takes to the new, to Spain, back to Spain with him as a baby. And he raises her as royalty in Spain, you know, in Spanish court. Uh, but soon we start to realize that she has these like superpowers and um, these, these things that, that a lot of people are starting to basically brand her as a witch. So in order to protect his daughter, he brings her back to the new world where she just really discovers that she has these superpowers and that she is the Aluna. She's considered like the leader of all of these ancient civilizations and she has to save her people. But she, you know, she's caught in the middle of these two worlds and there's romance and there's adventure and there's action. So I would say it's like a mix between like the movie Apocalypto and Pirates of the Caribbean, but really exploring the mysticism and the magic of the Inca and Aztecs and all the ancient civilizations kind of like mixed together in Central South America and the Caribbean. To me, I really love when stuff with history mixed together. This is why I kind of liked all the Assassin's Creed games. You know, this kind of has a little bit of aspect of that because you kind of take some aspects of history and kind of put a little superhero spin on it, you know? Well, it's amazing that you mentioned Assassin's Creed because actually the Assassin's Creed writers of the, of the video game, they're the ones that really helped me develop and write the comic books for the Aluna video game. So you hit the nail right in the head. Awesome. And yeah, I was extremely humbled and shocked and surprised, but that, but then not, not shocked that they, that they liked the story and that they were into it. And basically, you know, those guys are always ahead of their time. You know, they were ahead of their time with Assassin's Creed, believe it or not. Like when Assassin's Creed first come out, came out as, as they tell it. Uh, no one really wanted to touch it. They didn't think it was going to become like a big deal at all. And yeah. obviously, like Assassin's Creed is like crazy amazing. Yeah, I think it's happening yeah. after now. I mean, <laughs> they've done everything to the, you know? to the Greeks, you know, and obviously everything in Europe, exactly. America, you know, Revolution War. And so, so I really, I'm really appreciative of them because they they believed in the Aluna story and they believed just like I knew and how, and how I was feeling that uh, really representation of ancient civilizations or anything Latinx was lacking, you know? And I'm talking about, we started uh, these books in, way in 2008. So they knew that exploring the Inca and the Aztecs and Chief Jazz and like, I can go on with all these ancient civilizations of South and Central America and the Caribbean, that that mysticism hadn't been explored. Mm -hmm. I mean, they they themselves had explored a lot of the Greek mythology, a lot of the European, uh, but they were fascinated when I told them about maybe this idea and how, um, because back in 2008, um, 
how this all came about. If you, if, I'm sorry if I'm taking over. Oh, no, no, I'm, I'm enjoying all this. Please continue. But how this all came about is that I went to my first Comic Con in 2008. Mm -hmm. And I had no idea what Comic Con was about. And I just, of course, immediately loved it and was like, these are my people. This is what I do for a living. I dress which, 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 up. Uh, Comic Con was it? Was it, was I'm sorry. it San Diego? I'm sorry. Was it was it San Diego? Yeah. Oh, awesome! Yeah, yeah. I, yeah. I, I'm San one Diego, of those people. <laughs> 2008. I was I was there as a guest because I was uh, on the Knight Rider reboot at the time. I was doing Harold and Kumar, and I was on the Shield. So like, and 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 just everybody there. I was just like, oh my god, everyone's dressing up and they're reciting lines from movies and comic books, like. This is this is me. This is what I do for a living. But this is that these are my people. So I understood that culture like right away. Um, but very quickly it's realized. The turtle costume I wore. To there you go. <laughs> my own little uh, series. So. <laughs> no, of course, and I and I get it, you know. And so, but I very quickly realized that there weren't a lot of Latino or Latina superheroes like at all that represented anything that I had grown up with at all in a positive way, you know? Yeah, there was, you know, uh, women superheroes and stuff like that, but I, I don't know, I wasn't digging it. And I was I was kind of mad and I went home and then uh, a lot of people that loved me and creative people around me, they were like, you know what? You're onto something, create your own, do, do it. Um, very ignorant. I had no idea how to produce a comic book, but again, I did it with a lot of love. I, I tried to do my due diligence and I came out with the first book. And really the Aluna IP, it has been driven by the fans. So every time I go back to Comic-Con or talk about her or whatever, the fans ask for something else. So we started with book one and they asked for book two. And now we have eight books. We just came out with the omnibus graphic novel of the Aluna, the world of Aluna. So you can get your graphic novel now anywhere uh, you get your comics or books, Barnes and Noble, Amazon, Comixology. So I'm extremely proud of that. We just dropped that uh, on Wednesday and it's doing well. Um, but soon after we, we did the comic books, uh, we got approached by an online video game, which was Heroes of North. And they wanted to license the character and they were, they were all on board about what was really cool about Han at the time is that they were not afraid or they did not um, think of me as just an actress who wanted to see her likeliness, you know, animated or whatever. They, they, yeah. had, com they had real conversations with me about creating a real character and creating skins and her weapons and what, what her story would be to fit their world, right? And they really included me in those conversations and really made me feel seen and heard. And as a person of color, as a woman uh, in the gaming industry and in comic books, it's unheard of, right? Because it's still okay. pretty much a, a guy's guy thing, right? And I, and I understand, I get it, yeah. but um, they gave me a lot of confidence. So I really have to say that they, I, I really have to thank those guys a lot for for seeing the value in asking someone else that they hadn't asked before about their opinions and, and how, how this could fit their world. And so I'm glad that they did uh, because a lot of my gut feelings and a lot of the things that I was working on worked. Uh, the Aluna character was being chosen for play 90,000 times a day worldwide. Oh my goodness, and wow. Out of a hundred, <laughs> Out of a hundred plus superheroes, she was always being chosen for play top ten, from her from her creation on the game to she never really left because we we just left her up there, and it was basically proof to me that it doesn't matter if you're female, it doesn't matter if you're a person of color, people will play you if it's a cool story if it's a story that resonates with them right and it's usually based on an underdog story or something that they haven't heard before just just people are curious and and i have a lot of faith in that all the time and so yeah it proved that she can garner an audience no matter if you're female if you're male whatever you are black white hispanic asian they chose her 
a lot of guys chose to play as a woman and as a Luna's, you know, as a Luna superhero because they made her kick ass. I mean, her mechanistic yeah, exactly. was super like, powerful. It looks cool. It's got a cool backstory and you know, cool, you know, cool aspects like weapons and stuff. I mean, I love playing as female characters in video games all the time. You know, so. Exactly. So, um, so you know, I uh, it was it was a learning curve for me. But again, it was I kudos to those guys because, and I say guys because it was all male, <laughs> um, that they that they let me speak and that they thought that my ideas were valuable, right? And from then, I haven't stopped talking. <laughs> I haven't stopped communicating, and I knew that Aluna one day deserved to have her own video game that she deserved to headline her own video game so the game and so that's out, what we're uh, here you know yeah. the game well, it's coming out on pc nintendo switch playstation 4 xbox one um what do you have a release date yet for it may 26. May, 26th. may 26th finally yeah i mean she went through a lot of testing a lot of rigorous testing from all of the consoles and i understand why uh, sometimes it was a little frustrating. Sometimes I, you know, because I can't wait, you know. Oh, uh, yeah. it's, it's being considered one of the first video games created by, you know, inspired by a character that a Latina created and that a Latina publisher and video game developer and video game producer. And all of that sounds crazy to me that I would be one of the first to even do that. But I am humbled. Mm -hmm. And I appreciate that. And I will take that responsibility. And that's why I will talk to whoever wants to talk to me about it, because I feel like there are so many women and little girls out there and little boys that look like me or see themselves reflected in me that could say, oh, wow, that's possible. Like that's right. Because usually what what does a gamer look like? Right. What is it? What is the stereotype of a no, gamer? Yeah, I get it all the time. Just going to cons, you know, friends joke around. Oh, you're going to hang around a bunch of like, you know, guys and virgins and stuff. I'm like, no, girls are into comics now. <laughs> you know, it's like, you know, there, there is still that serious. Okay. You know? I was a virgin for many years and it was all right. I was yeah, fine. <laughs> but it's just, you know, it just uh but I, I i really love your story i really hope it inspires other girls to create uh comic books superheroes video games too because uh, i do think we need that type of voice diverse in the video game and comic book community so i, I applaud you on sharing your story with that you know thank you so much and yeah and and, and just getting a little back to a little bit about okay, like, what what the game is about the game is obviously an action rpg game it's independently produced and developed and we took a lot you know what we lacked in funds as far as making it like super flashy right because we knew that we couldn't compete with like assassin's creed right yeah. what we lacked what we lacked in that we made for it we made up before in story and tenfold and we we really dig deep into again the mythology of the all these ancient civilizations right and what and what that really brought forth is all of these mystical creatures and this magic and all of the possibilities of what all of these ancient civilizations believed in and what they were living in right i mean if you really start to think about like what the incas and aztecs and what they what they did and what they were able to accomplish i mean they're otherworldly right and so that is exactly i didn't even have to make up superpowers for a luna i literally was just taking and borrowing stuff from history and from these ancient civilizations and i was like oh my god they believed that they can that they can consult a bowl of water and be in the present and the past and the future at the same time because That's they were in this because they were in this state of meditation called Luna, right? And when I started reading that, I was like, that's the name. Those are her superpowers. And I want those superpowers now. <laughs> yeah. Myself, you know? Really fascinating. And so, and so we we take a lot of liberties with history, yeah. But yeah. I think we we basically will take the gamer and make them interested in learning more and learning and maybe 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 they'll learn 
like what did we take liberty with and what did we stay true to and what did we change and switch up and what's real what isn't and hopefully their imagination can run away with themselves as, as far as when they're playing right and it, and it is introducing them to a, to another world south america central america you know pirates and hmm. and conquistadors and fighting different tribes and again trying to discover like her where her powers lay and where her destiny should take her so it's an action adventure but the story is rich and what's cool about it is that the cut scenes are straight out of the comic books oh it's awesome so we really we really took the artwork we took the artwork from the comic books and really tried to animate them and really incorporate them with the video game so if you're a comic book geek and you want to discover um, the world of Aluna comic books through the video game, you can. And I'm sure it's going to entice you to get your own books and so on and so forth. That's so cool. Well, you definitely sparked my interest. I want to learn more history about all this. And I guess I could do that in the video game, which, you know, comes out yes. month, you know? Absolutely. And, and it's really, it's a game that anyone can play. Mm -hmm. And I think, I think the whole family will be able to you know, dig in and, and, and play Aluna. So it'll be really cool. Oh yeah, my, my two kids are gamers like me, so. <laughs> awesome, it is definitely a game that you could definitely play with them. And you guys, I'm sure they'll discover uh, some hidden gems and powers and, and weapons that you are not gonna be able to understand because <laughs> that's how young minds work. And then yeah. uh, you guys can share secrets and it, it's just, it's going to be really, really cool. Like so far, our testing has really it. We are really pleasantly surprised at how much fun people are having playing her so far. So yeah. I'm so excited to share it. Well, congratulations on uh, the video game coming out and obviously the combo books continue success. And I hope this just the beginning of what this world's going to be. I mean, more video games, more books, maybe a movie down the line. I think it's so cool, you know. Well, thank you. Yeah, I mean, we are definitely in talks of developing her into a series for television. Oh, yeah. um, I don't know if you know, but I, I played Penny from On My Block on Netflix, and I'm currently filming the fourth season. And this fourth season um, is really special to me not only because it's slated to be the last season, but also because I got the opportunity, my first opportunity to direct an episode of television, oh, which is also uh, extremely important for me, not only to be represented in front of the camera, but behind the scenes. And boy, I have the bug. I have the directing bug and I want to direct even more. So I'm putting it out there. And you got your foot um, in the door for Netflix, so. For yeah, Netflix. I mean, listen. <laughs> Without Netflix, it wouldn't be possible. Without the showrunner of the show, which her name is Lauren Unerich. Um, you know, she's the also the showrunner and creator of Awkward, which did really well yeah. for many years. So uh, she knows what she's doing. So I will take that as a compliment. If she saw something in me to trust her artwork with me, and she trusted me enough to direct, and so did the other EPs. And Netflix gave me the tools as far as uh, to succeed. You know, they put me through a program, and so I'm I'm really indebted to them. And so now I'm hoping that they see that I can I can also achieve things behind the camera, and that um, that I'm worth it, right? Uh, that there's money to be made there with the ideas and and with some of the stuff that I have learned. So I, I'm hoping that they can give Aluna uh, a shot. I mean, whether it be an animated series or a uh, live action, I think the possibilities are endless. Yeah. You, and you hopefully be, people like you are into it. Oh yeah, definitely. Yeah, yeah. I, I could see the whole comic book crowd. I mean, it looks like, sounds like a lot of people are already into it, but people like me just discovered it. I think I'm gonna be super into it. Go check out all the comics in the video game. Uh, for more information, uh, you can go to lunagame.com for the video game. And the comic books is theworldofaluna.com. Thank you so much. And That's I can't right. wait to talk to you down the road for future projects. Oh, thank you so much. And again, good luck with the moving. Thank you for giving Aluna shine. 
Uh, if anybody is curious about what I do in my daily life to keep this family business going, they can um, follow me on Twitter at Polygarsis1 or on Instagram, The Real Polygarsis or Facebook, Official Polygarsis. Uh, you read my mind. I was going to ask for your Thank social you. media. I guess that's another superpower you got, huh? <laughs> 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 well, thank you so much. Keep up the amazing work.